Luke, we don't have a guest this week. We couldn't find anybody on this planet to talk to us, which is kind of understandable. Um, jokes aside, though, we do have a what, what is this? Uh, there's a, a, a small cap stock that it no longer as small because it went up almost 300 percent, 287 percent. But I'm not going to try and pronounce the name. I'm going to let you pronounce the name and tell me why it's up. <laughs> I see any gold. Yeah, that's very yeah. difficult. I think. Uh, Did not I, see, I I tried googling it, and so it apparently is a translation from Zulu, and it means what is it? And then if I let Google pronounce it, I see nai. It says it's I see nai. Yeah, I think it's I see Okay. I see uh, went up um, about three hundred percent this week. The number one, and even though I don't think this is the next big thing. Uh, if we, we talk about the movers of the week, it would be a shame not to mention a company that goes up 3x in the week. Um, this is a company that's owned also by uh, Mark Creasy, and he's probably the number one explorationist in Australia. And he only owns a number of a couple of percent for him, not the biggest deal, I think. Um, but I think because he is involved and because in 2022 they made a very high grade discovery on the surface. Uh, the stock went up two years ago, um, quite a lot in a short time, actually. Uh, but it was really like a nuggety system. Uh, and we know a nuggety system from a couple of years earlier, the Novo hype. Um, everybody was looking for nuggets. And when that, that hype ended, the uh, interest in nuggets also went down quite a lot. Mm. Uh, but of course, this was a tiny company, I think a $12 million company at the time. They found these super high grade uh, nuggets on surface um, and Greasy is involved and, you know, things become a little bit of a hype at those valuations and went up, but quickly again went down. And since then, I think it was just in a downtrend for a long time. And last week it traded at $5 million market cap. And now I think they also replaced the management team and a new team team came in and got some compensation and shares and all the things somebody needs uh, to lead a new uh, to lead a mining company, a junior miner, and they came up with a news release uh, this week with again spectacular. The title was spectacular vein gold discovery expands Christmas gift shear. Uh, just a 20 meter trench. So they they also say we have 20 meter of strike and 20 meter of strike is not typically making a mine, uh, but some really, really high grade gold in there. Uh, they even um, made a dory bar uh, out of the gold they found so far. Um, full transparency, full, um, I, I bought some stock in the, at the open because I thought, well, $5 million stock with a news release, spectacular. New management team promotion and uh, and it worked out. It went up three x. They immediately halted the stock again uh, to do a uh, capital raising. So uh, this was maybe also for the purpose of getting some interest again uh, to raise some money. Um, I'm not trying to downplay the project completely. I think when you find so much gold, something's going on. But I will leave that to the geologists. Um, but certainly something of interest. Certainly not something that right now has all the signs of a new mine, uh, but I think it's interesting enough, uh, and the share price uh, is saying so. Yeah, I had a seventy or seventy-five percent loss on uh, one of the negative systems that you mentioned, and luckily you only mentioned one, so everybody knows which one it is. But but I have a yeah, I have a hard time getting myself to even start looking at something like that. Because the nuggety gold systems are kind of like the attractive women that you'd find at 4 a.m. in a club, right? They're <laughs> they're exciting. They look, they're flashy. They're, right? But they can be incredibly uh, unpredictable. And then you maybe wake up next to them. Not that I would know how that feels. And then uh, you see that it's not what you had first expected a couple of hours later. And so that's kind of my experience with nuggety gold systems. So I've come, just yeah. chosen to basically ignore it uh when i see nuggety yeah again i just ignore it do you think that's a a failure in in my thinking like is it is it safe to just ignore it as a rule i think you need to do whatever you are good at and if you are not a geologist uh, i mean we are both not a geologist and 
some people would think, I think especially people who are technically qualified, um, like why are these uh, people not knowing anything investing in this space? But sometimes I would argue if you know enough of the other aspects that make a company go up, it could even be a benefit um, to buy something. I mean, this I bought it at, and it was a small trade at $5 million because I think it was enough for the stock to move. Nothing more than that. Uh, if, you, if somebody drills 200 meters out of the blue and you, and you trust the team, 200 meters of two grams gold, uh, then you just know it's either uh, drilled right into the, the guts of a system or it is a true discovery or it is a twin and somebody's trying to make some money. But you're trying to assess those three things and think, okay, this team is reliable. I think this is a discovery. I'm going to buy it. In this case, it's it's narrow, it's high grade, it's difficult to assess, it's not drilled yet. It it's I think you could argue that it's just interesting and anyone who can who knows the area and can assess the potential of such a high grade trench and if it is meaningful at all or not, um, could say something meaningful about the geology and about the prospectiveness of this project. I have no clue, to be honest. Uh, but it, you can still make a three-bagger uh, so far if you know that a news release uh, can hype. So I'm not good at assessing the rocks in this case, but I'm fairly okay at assessing the impact of a news release to the market. And that's what I play here, nothing more uh, than that. And maybe this project is amazing. I just don't know. Hmm. Well, do you think it's high grade? Because, because I mean, really att attracting the attention here, just high grade alone. Like, do you think that m people who bought it and pushed the stock up as much, did they just buy it on a headline? They're like, oh, high grade, it's going to go up. Let's just buy it. Well, you can better have high grade than having nothing, right? Uh, if you, you you look for uh, something, and, and I don't think so far they are looking here for a uh, bulk tonnage uh, system. So if you, if you know that you are... In, looking for veins, for gold veins. I mean, Del Radian in Ireland is a 5 million ounce mine and with an average width of, I think, two meters. And they have areas of half a meter or a meter. And that's, I think, by some considered a world-class discovery or deposit. Uh, so sometimes a, a vein or multiple veins can be very significant. And if you would have multiple veins here and... Uh, the average grade, I mean, you will have dilution if this would become a mine and it's way too early to even talk about this becoming a mine. Um, but if at some point they would find so several veins uh, or one vein that's super high grade and sort of predictable, it's not impossible that, that the high grade is an important factor, of course, because in a vein, you need high grade. Uh, a vein with low grade <laughs> is, is worth nothing. So, uh, so yes, high grade is interesting, but uh, it's, I think... Right now it's nuggety, it's small, it's high grade. Um, and I haven't done enough work or I'm not qualified to do the work to say that this has potential to host one very small but high grade deposit that could be profitably mined. Uh, sometimes in the in the first couple of news releases, you need to assess if that possibility is there. And if it's then only a $5 million company, perhaps it should be a $20 million company. Uh, mm -hmm. But these things, in my opinion, go only by comparison. What is in this early stage, and maybe it's not even that early in this case because they're already on it for two years or something. Uh, but what in this stage of the project makes it worth a speculative 20 million? And uh, and the better the team is at promoting and, and trustable and reliable, the more value it will get. If it's a team that is doing the first job ever and have never done a mining company before and they find this, they may only get $5 million of value for what they found. So it's a set of factors i think that that determine a market cap and i figured that this news triggered enough excitement perhaps in the market that it would go up from its four or five million dollar valuation to i was expecting 10 but it went to i think 15 or something but so what i what i mean by that more specifically is as i've told you before i've started taking a keen interest in geology i've started caring about the rocks i want to be able to understand it that doesn't mean i can i just really want to but do should i be wanting to even in the first place like this for this thing it really is i i think it really was only enough to see high grade in the headline and just kind of operate from from the from a perspective that i feel comfortable in which is to see a perspective of a 70 iq person where i'm like oh high grade in the headline i should just buy it 
and then just buy it and the stocks goes up. Um, the stock goes up. So, I mean, do, do, do I even have to care about the geology? In my personal opinion, it depends uh, on your position and why you take the position. I have positions that I own for multiple years, some of them three or four years. And I own them because I think that team has something in hand or potentially in hand that could be interesting. And if it's a VMS, I want to know everything about VMS because it's a long-term position. I want to know the area, I mean, the country, the the jurisdiction, um, other discoveries that were made, how how were they made in that area, what are the techniques. Um, and, and then I want to know more about how a VMS is even formed. Uh, but I do know that I will never be able to compete if I'm not going to make it my key thing in life uh, because I never studied geology. So how can I compete with people who did it for 20, 30 years? Um, unless I'm going to really, I mean, it's possible still. I mean, I'm not too old to learn, but uh, it's not my goal to become better that, than them. Uh, but I need to know enough, I think, to invest for a long term in a certain thesis. In this case, it's really a play, a trade. And I do those things. Sometimes I buy a stock because a team comes in, uh, a name comes in. And sometimes I don't really care about the details too much because I think it's something that I will own for a month or six months. It's it's not a day trade, but it's a shorter term trade. And in some positions, I have the mindset of I'm going to wait for a year or two because I think they will they have a good chance of making a discovery. And then I want to know as much as possible so that I uh, and I'm still not the edge is still not my geology knowledge in that case. My edge is then knowing the team, knowing their progress, talking to them on a regular enough basis that I can assess their odds of making a discovery. And what will a discovery look like? So what is sort of the minimum I need to see for it to be significant and, and move towards my target market cap? And hmm. uh, yeah, so that that's how I look at these things. I think there is an edge to be had in geology just because of how few people really care about the geology in the first place. Um, I started reading a book when I came back from Toronto. Uh, someone gave me a book as, as a present, and it was a book written by a geologist about sort of his his adventures on Bay Street. The book's called Lost on Bay Street by Alex Dooley, I believe. And he was talking about his adventures in the 70s and in the 80s on Bay Street, so in Toronto. A lot more people care about the geology, and, and brokers had more geologists on staff and so on and so forth and then they kind of figured out that it's not research that sells it's sales that sells and that makes the money so the people kind of stopped caring about the rocks in depth and so far i've lost money not caring about the rocks like the nuggety system that, that you mentioned previously but then i've also made money on paper with the wally resources because i did care about the rocks because it wouldn't cross my desk i was not like oh i should just buy it because these guys i know like percussion or whatever, they're, they're friends of mine, they're smart, they're in it, I should be in it. No, I said like, okay, let me have a look at it and, and talk to other people I know. And so the rocks kind of, you know, the rocks made me money the way I see it. Um, so I think there is an edge to be had, but you have to get really serious about it. And I wonder if there's really room to do that if you're not a geologist. But then I know other people who are not geologists, like uh, I think you know Bernie Kreft as well. He's not a geologist, but he's a very successful prospector. And I, you know, I'd put him against most geologists I know, and I know that he'd be he'd be able to talk geology better than they would probably. Um, so yeah, I think there is an edge to be had in in geology. I do think, um, and and I don't know for sure because we talked about Avali opposition quite a lot. Uh, I think, but I'm not sure enough yet, <laughs> that you didn't buy that stock. That your edge was not the geology. I think you probably were became very interested because it's an important position for you and you got to know the people and 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 you got involved with something and then you you read a lot about it and I think you got a level of excitement about the belts and and um about what they told you but I don't think your edge was in recognizing things that maybe an experienced geologist would notice. Uh, I think it's a combination of factors and I'm talking for you right now, so it's a bit arrogant, but I I, I would think that uh, geology was not the foremost reason that you got excited. But I think people that you know and in the team itself convince you enough to believe that the geology is good at that project and which was proven mm -hmm. uh, uh, because, it, it, yeah, well, that's, that's I think 
you need a couple of things that make you comfortable in a com in a company, I guess. Uh, at least that's how I feel. And I always felt that geology was not the biggest thing because how much can you really know from uh, unless you really dive deep into the controls and and how things are formed? And uh, that's just my uh, two cents on this. Well, so it's ultimately luck, I think, that actually made the money for me there i suppose and i say mate again paper profit maybe it doesn't count because you never know what happens with these things over time but when i for yeah when, i mean for, for example with awali i looked at the size of it all the thesis and so sometimes people would say oh we're chasing an iocg or a porphyry or whatever what i mean by having an edge in the geology means like even understanding what is that like what even is mm. an iocg as you said how does it get formed could it be here in the first place and so I, I, I'm I'm sure that a lot of people just really don't care about that. They're like, is this stock going to go up or not? I don't care what an IOCG is. I just want the stock to go up. And so you then start looking at, for example, alteration patterns, uh, structural controls that, are, that, that might be controlling the higher grade mineralization and stuff like that. And then you start understanding that, oh, we're making a decent chance at this actually being an IOCG. Of course, you're never going to understand everything in depth as, as a geologist would, but Maybe that's an edge in and of itself. So being like a non-geologist, geologist, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't think it's luck either. Oh, there's an element of luck for sure. You always need an element of luck. But um, I mean, you guys did a really good job in finding Awali and recognizing it. And of course, you listen to what people say. You read about this, the project. Uh, uh, I just have my doubts that you would have if you would just go to that country and you would look at all the data and, and nobody would tell you anything about it that you would recognize on your own <laughs> or maybe you're just much better than me much quicker but uh, if you put me somewhere in a country and you give me a lot of data raw data not very well explained data uh, that a geologist would understand but i don't without ex explanation i doubt that i would recognize or not recognize i, I joked once at a site visit and I told a guy, if you take that, that that somebody told me this is barren. And I said, oh, this looks actually quite nice. You could have told me this is the highest grade part of the core and I would have believed you. And, and it's actually true. Uh, they, they could have told me that and I would have believed it. So mm. you, you want to work with people you trust uh, for some reason. Sometimes you know them already for a long time or sometimes you just heard good stories from someone you trust. And if they tell you certain things about the system and you start imagining like, okay, I understand what you mean. And you start reading at home about it and you go back again with questions and you, you ask follow-ups and you get excited about the idea of understanding the complete system, that complete process of going through, talking to them, listening, reading again, that's certainly part, I think, of the reason you could buy a stock and you probably did something like that. I just doubt that, that you had personally the handle on this system uh, I think it's it's a set of things that developed over time, uh, but which made you comfortable with it, and and you get full credits for finding it. Uh, I, I I just think it's important also to realize uh, why did you make this win? Because if you want to replicate it in the future, you should also recognize which things were luck, which things were skill, uh, which is probably quite difficult. But this is I, I'm maybe reflecting more on myself than you, but this is how I would expect how where your confidence came from. I think you're wrong. I, I booked a flight to Cote d'Ivoire and went and looked at no, I'm just kidding. Of course, that's exactly, it's 100% like how it came down. Actually, people can go to, I believe, Trevor from Mining Stock Daily will have published it by then. But Vukashin, Devrim and I and uh, Stephen from Orcap did a, a panel during the German Gold Show last week when you were there as well. I think he's going to have published it to hear the entire Wally story, how it all came down. But it was exactly like that. So Devrim brought it to our attention in the first place, then uh, Vokashin's very in-depth research attracted me to read more and more into it. Then I met with uh, the team online, uh, spoke to them about the rocks, obviously, and all these things. And then I started reading about the rocks and it was like, exactly, it's exactly how you described it, how it went down for me. So um, yes, fair point. And then on the luck versus skill thing again why i call it that it's probably a look that made me the money here because i haven't i don't have confirmation that i can that i can replicate it because they would like to and once i do i will have you know maybe a nudge towards okay there is skill involved to it but for now i'm, I'm mostly putting the points on luck for me if i can keep replicating it multiple times if i can keep 
uh, you know, delivering profits that are led sort of from this bottom up approach, which is to say you start at the company level instead of starting at, oh, the dollar is going to go to zero. I should buy some gold stocks. This is a good gold stock. I should buy it. That's sort of the top down. Well, I do, I've started doing the opposite bottom up, which is start at the asset level. Well, if I can replicate it a, a couple of times and I make money from with the bottom up approach, then then yeah, I would say that there's skill involved too, but not not for now. Um, and, and actually, I think this is also why it's called a story. Uh, I, I always, when I started in the mining industry, I didn't understand why people always were calling things stories, uh, nice story, because you almost downgrade you know, this is a company, right? This is it's something real. It's not a, just a story. But I think the key thing is that all these things together are forming the story uh, because these things are not cash flowing machines or they are not making cash flow at all. They just consume uh, capital. Uh, so the story needs to fit well. And that's why you need the team and the geology and all the things together. That that's it's needs to sound it needs to sound like a real prospect. And that's why people call it a story or a, a trade or a, um, I mean, I've, I've heard, words before that in the beginning I couldn't really uh, it was almost, almost as if it's fake but in a way it is fake it's an it's an idea it's a concept it could not be true uh, mm. until proven otherwise and uh, and that's why all these things I think in fact are stories um, well I mean well researched stories sometimes not always um, but they are stories and 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 the better the story gets uh, the better the share price uh, performs of course and uh, and sometimes it, it leads to something real uh, which uh, seems to be the case with Awali. Maybe I should start calling my wife a story because she consumes <laughs> a lot of capital and she promises a lot of things too but she's unpredictable as well. Um, what with, with Iceni gold to go back to it or I, I should pull up my my Flemish accent and, and just call it something like I'm not even going to do it. Anyways with Iceni gold it's um I suppose share structure is also what attracted you to it because I'm looking at it. Uh, board board and, and management owns 43%. IPO shareholders have a big part of it too. Um, and other shareholders is listed at 8.7%. And I know you like, I mean, share structure is very, very central for you when you when you take a decision, right? Yes, but not in this case. <laughs> in, okay. um, in Australia, I, uh, I focus on it a, bit, a bit less. And I'm not... I don't really feel qualified, to be honest, in, in Australia, because in Canada, I feel, even if I don't know people, I've seen so many, I, I've gone through all these databases so much that even people I don't know, I feel I know them because I've seen their their trail, like from company to company to company. And you look into those companies, how are they managed? How is the story told? And, and you feel like you know some a lot of people, at least how they operate. And in Australia, I don't have that that skill or that benefit. I didn't do enough work. So I, I I look at, is it, typically I only look for the real discoveries where I feel, okay, this could be so big uh, or such a big story that it's um, it's going to take off from here. And that's why I'm, why I'm going to buy it. I'm, I have another disadvantage that it's happening in my night. So I have to put alarms and things on. Uh, I even have a, a real alarm that triggers at certain, certain, cases and it wakes me up uh, if the discovery is good enough um, at least by words in terms of wording um, and so so in this case I didn't look at share structure at all um, I, I did look at is, is Creasy still involved and he was and that's why it gave me a level of comfort that it is not a complete scam I would guess uh, uh, and I think in Australia scams are more difficult anyways because the regulators are pretty on top of those companies um, so uh, yeah, that, that I, I just bought it for a trade and I still own it. It's a small position. It's not too meaningful, but again, we are talking for a long time and it's an interesting discussion around, uh, not even Iceni, but it's the biggest mover of the week and I felt we had to address uh, what happened here. You, you have an alarm that wakes you up at night because there's discoveries. What is wrong with you? <laughs> well, quite a lot, I think, yeah. I, uh, well, we have in, in the Gold Discovery app, there is a discovery alert. This one triggers quite quickly. Um, I don't want to be waking up for everyone, every alert there, because I, the purpose there is to just get an alert for anything that looks like a discovery, because during the day, I have time for these things. I can get one or two alerts a day and look into them, and they are typically interesting. Uh, but in the night, I just want to be wake. I just want to wake up if it's potentially very interesting and and i i trained uh, sort of a model based on uh all the big discoveries in the last 20 years in australia and those 
those news releases, the wording used for those news releases combined, um, I made a very strict filter and it only triggers on, on average one and a half, once every one and a half month. Mm -hmm. And and then it, I will be work, it will wake me up. And this one wasn't triggered, to be honest. I was, was awake for another company uh, that I was following. You, you have a young kid, right? Is, is that not enough of an alarm? Well, he actually woke me up a couple of times by coincidence at the right time last year. And uh, I was able to trade a little bit in uh, in Australia. But uh, uh, so far, so good even with, with that alarm. Because he woke me up at the right times. So maybe he also already has a bit of an interest. It's been a good investment so far, eh? <laughs> exactly. But I, I suppose he's at, at the point where he doesn't wake up too much anymore, right? No, no, no. That's right. He sleeps well. Good for you. Okay, so what, what were you, you were awake for another company, you said? What, what was that about? Well, this one um, also didn't give me the alarm, but um, I, I did get, uh, and to promote a little bit, from the Gold Discovery app, uh, an, an alert for the halts. Uh, we, we follow trading halts, not just the Canadian ones, also the Australian ones we, we follow. And uh, we also connect the news release that, that follows those uh, those trading halts. And I, just, I saw that Aurum Resources uh, did have a trading halt related to drill results. I didn't know the company. I looked into it. Ivory Coast, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, they would say, I think, normally. And um, Avali did have a two-grammer over 70 meters. This company has a two-grammer over 70 meters at the same depth, more or less. Um, doesn't say much on its own, but an interesting intercept. Um, the team, interestingly, is also involved in Tiedo Minerals, an $800 million company in Ivory Coast. Uh, so, so they know the country for sure. And this company, Aurum, is drilling uh, with their own rigs. They even bought a new rig recently and are really drilling a lot. Um, so I quickly figured out that this is a company really looking for something and not just a promo story, let's say. Um, they halted the stock for this reason and the stock already went up quite a lot in the last couple of days and weeks. So I felt maybe there's often a little bit of a leak or maybe people who have a better feel for a certain story. So I felt, okay, market going up, trading halt, drill results, Ivory Coast, which is a country with quite a lot of deposits. Um, so if you have people who know the country and know where to be and know when to halt the stock, uh, was interesting enough for me to really put an alert just for this company. And this also woke me up <laughs> this week. And um, the news wasn't good enough for me to buy it. 90 meters of one grams and a bit too deep. Um, I think this company is probably finding the right things and finding the right signals. And maybe th this leads to a big discovery, but this was not the breakthrough discovery hole for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, let, I didn't buy it. Um, but it was interesting enough, I think, to tell the process a little bit uh, of how to find these things and what that the chart it on its own told me like, hey, it has been a little bit too popular recently. Are there people who know a bit more than me? Uh, and that's why I thought these drill results may be spectacular, which in my opinion, they weren't, but they were good. Hmm. You said it was it was not good enough for you to buy it. Um what would have been? I mean, I know the 100 gram meter thing is often thrown around, but then depth matters and then a bunch of other things. Again, talking about geology, since I've sort of looked into it, I know that other things matter too. But what matters for you? Like, what would you have liked to see in this headline for you to have bought it? Yeah, so either uh, a hole like they had before, two grams over 70 meters, but close to surface and, and perhaps some signs that... It has some size to it that it's not just at depth that great, but at that depth that great is also at surface. So a two gram hole, a two gram over 70 meters is a good intercept if it's drilled from surface directly. Something like that. Uh, I don't really care about the 100 gram rule on its own. It, uh, one gram of 100 meters, again, could be a, uh, a hole at Iceni. Uh, so it depends a little bit where it is and the depth indeed. Um, if it was deeper and for they had a an avali type hole or maybe a third of it, uh, ten grams over uh, thirty meters would mm. have done it for me. If they had a good cross section in 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 the news release and they were explaining what they think they found, and um, then I would have bought it as well. Uh, so so either some somewhat higher grade, five grams or higher over significant widths at depth, or uh, something above one and a half grams. Uh, of significant widths from surface. So just roughly speaking, that's what I was looking for.
Well, but you had almost that exact same situation with Awali uh, with uh, BBM was 75 meters of 2.4 grams, relatively close to surface, kind of the same market cap, same jurisdiction. You didn't buy it. I was bidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't come to my price. I was bidding at 20 or 21 cents and it just didn't hit my bid. It was, a I mean, we talked about it before. I think there's a joint venture there and it's 30%, a little bit less control. 30% also gives you at least, you know, 30% of the market cap or less, uh, I think, typically. Um, so that first announcement was also quite deep. So it, it proved that there was something consistent going on, but it was deep. So on its own, not good enough yet. So I felt like, okay, this is a this is a breakthrough, uh, but it was not good enough for me yet to buy, to pay 25, 30 cents. I was too cheap. I was waiting 20 cents for Avali. I didn't get it. And then a week or two later, that other hole came out and I was bidding uh, 65 or 70 cents, didn't get it again, and then pulled my bid. And then it came back to 60 cents and didn't buy it. <laughs> so I tried a couple of times, but um, it depends on several factors. Uh, also, why I initially was willing to pay 70 cents and a little bit later, I wasn't willing to pay 70 cents. I think we shouldn't go in that detail right now because that would be a little bit too much in detail, but uh, maybe another day. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I have the perfect judgment there. Uh, maybe if next week or two weeks from now, Avali comes with another hole like that, 60, 70 cents was the best thing to do for me. Uh, but but I have pretty strong rules and, and I try to stick to my own rules. Um, uh, there's, there will always be a new opportunity if you miss one. Hmm. This actually might flow nicely into what we were intending on talking about or what you wanted to talk about today because um some uh, so some companies or some stocks of companies that make good discoveries kind of start edging up before the discovery and that's also something i've wondered about myself like what is happening here i mean is there is there a leak um have the drillers seen the core but if they see it can they say something and uh, you had a couple of examples. I think Great Bear is, is one of the most famous examples that you have here where I can see that it started going up from kind of 50 cent range to 72 cents. It's almost a 50%, you know, up, upturn. And then they made that big discovery. So, yeah, what did you want to talk about here? Yeah, uh, let me start by saying when I started, th this is an interesting topic, I think, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. And then I started working on those charts for the companies where I remembered there was a bit of a move up and, and very quickly I realized well maybe I shouldn't do this because I don't want to bring these people and these companies in the position where I'm accusing them of, of something um, but I, I decided to go ahead with it because that's not what I'm trying to do here I'm not trying to I've got a couple of examples and I'm not trying to accuse these companies of leaking uh, information a leak could happen um, at all kinds of level uh, the driller itself the core cutter the geologist on site, uh, the company transporting the core to the lab, the assay lab, the management team, um, maybe somebody who knows the management team very well, the CEO smiles more than he usually smiles or never smiles, and suddenly he smiles. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be several reasons. Uh, I even have an example myself where I didn't have any material information not disclosed to my possession, and I felt, based on certain factors, and I will tell that story a little bit later, why that company was about to make a discovery. Um, uh, so I, I'm not accusing these companies of leaks, mm. uh, but it was of it is obvious that most of, a lot of these companies go up in front of a big discovery. Um, sometimes they go down in front of bad results, and I think there could be several reasons for that. Um, so so Great Bear indeed um, went from fifty cents to seventy two cents, which is almost fifty percent. Um, and if you look at it on the chart, those volumes seem slow, but those volumes sometimes are pretty significant compared to the volume before the discovery. So after the discovery, of course, volumes go up and the volumes before that look small. Sometimes they are not very small. I, I'm, I, it's difficult to judge here if it was big, but the price went up. Same for Amex. Amex went from $0.05 cents to $0.17 cents in the weeks ahead of the discovery. And I'm not going to go too far into every company because, again, my purpose is not to say these companies are bad or something. It's just to show, ideally, I should have done a statistical review of companies that didn't go up and did go up and, and then look with, at the actual numbers, the percentages. And I still think it would be a pretty high number. Uh, that would have been 
a stronger story. Uh, but I've got a couple of examples. So Lavras Gold, I own it. I like the team. Stock went up from 20 cents to 40 cents in a month uh, before the discovery. Avali went up from 10 cents to 20 cents. And before you start protecting them, or it went up, it doubled before the discovery. Philo, I talked to them in February, um, didn't notice anything. Uh, at 170, stock doubled and made the discovery. Osino, 46 um, cents to um, 47. So not even that, that much. Uh, oh no, it was actually 34 in the days, uh, in the weeks before. Uh, and Aurum is the one that I, that's that's why I came up with this discussion, went from 20 cents to 36 uh, in the weeks before this trading halt. Um, and they did announce good, good news. I don't think it was the breakthrough. They Maybe the breakthrough is still coming. They still have essay spending. But um, mm. the, to the topic is these things often go up uh, before a discovery. Uh, and that's why I brought it in as a discussion point. It, it, analyzing the width of a smile of a CEO with a satellite image sounds exactly like something you would do. Like that would be a, a very <laughs> thing to do. Um, but is is any of this useful? And I obviously don't want to sound like a smart ass or whatever. But I'm just wondering, like, can I foresee it? Like, can I know, okay, there's results coming. The stock is, you know, up 50% since the bottom, but nobody has said anything about it for months. There's no conferences or anything that are happening. Sometimes stocks can go up after conferences and stuff like that as well. I, you know, I, I other stuff that I check is uh, I kind of scrape the internet, if you will, to see has the stock been mentioned on any YouTube channels or whatever it might be that are big, and then they're making the stock go up. And if if all of it says no, then I will, what just buy the stock because there's going to be a discovery. Like, is there anything useful in here? Um, I think in a broader way, it's difficult. We are testing it a little bit by, we say for every news release, the topic of the news release, um, uh, we look at how much, I mean, we look at millions of price points and news points to see if there's any pattern. And I think there will be a pattern, but which will probably too, be too weak to really trade on. Uh, so I don't think in general, when you see a, a stock go up, buy it because they are drilling and it's probably good. I wouldn't do that. Um, the example that I had in mind to give is Azimuth um, in Quebec, uh, because I was following this company since 2017, 16 or 17, talked to the company every two or three months, very good conversations, very geology oriented team, not promotional oriented. Uh, I was reading all their news releases. We even discussed one news release, why they worded things, <laughs> the way they worded things, because I was curious why it looked so similar to uh, the Eleanor discovery. Uh, there was a discovery that Azimuth made. Well, Eleanor discovery was 2014. Azimuth made a discovery in 2016 or 17. And not, uh, so a discovery close to Eleanor didn't really result in a big one. Uh, but the wording was similar. So I actually discussed the wording with the team. Um, and, and over time, they developed certain projects because they are a prospect generator. And they, they landed with Elmer. And Elmer also had the early signs of a discovery on surface. I mean, they did trenching and all the things that companies can do on surface before they drill. And it was becoming a better and better prospect. And that's something, of course, the management can communicate uh, with, with the market through news releases and through conversation. And in September 2019, I remembered really well, I was talking to the company. They were doing a financing, I think, or maybe it was October. I was in Australia and calling them like, I want to be part of this because I feel like something is happening here. And the financing was full uh, and they couldn't really change it anymore. Uh, so I accepted it, but kept on following, kept on following the story. And the news releases that came out in the months after, also they described that they were, they found visible gold, which is not something they typically would do from a promotional standpoint, maybe just to disclose things. Uh, another financing came in Board members participated. There was a strategic investor. Um, the, the language they used in the news releases before that financing were more certain. Uh, I mean, they never wanted to promote something they don't know for sure. And I felt that the news releases were becoming increasingly uh, confident that they had something by just reading it very properly. I was even reading the news release today again. And I, I noticed the same thing again. Um, and the stock was trading a bit stronger. So there was a, a number of factors. I called them up. I, I even I looked at my notes from that conversation in 2019. 
and I wrote it down completely. Uh, there was no leaking at all. Uh, but I just felt that the confidence of them thinking, hey, we have something here, went up greatly. And uh, and if there's one team not to promote these things ahead of time, it, it's Azimuth. I mean, they really stick to the facts. And if you even want a little bit of, but what, what do you think it could be? Then, then they already stop talking because they don't want to tell stories that are not happening yet. Uh, and still, I felt they have a level of confidence here. And I bought more of the stock. And, and a month later in January, the stock um, went three or four X when they discovered a real, um, a really good discovery in Quebec, uh, Elmer. Um, so my in-depth story made me realize this could be something. And of course, that, that same thing, every stock has a number of people following it very closely. And those people, of course, see these things a little bit ahead of time. Uh, I didn't follow Hercules Silver, so I had no idea. People who followed it, followed it very closely, of course, knew what they were looking for, perhaps. Um, so that's why I think it doesn't necessarily have to be a leak. It could be various things. Um, but people, for some reason, the market does notice in time. And sometimes, I guess, it's also a leak. Uh, it doesn't have to be the CEO, of course. But... I think it's interesting that most of these charts are going up, not so much in Australia. Yeah. And is it, is it always like, I mean, there should be some margin for error and I'm just wondering what is that percent? Like how always is it? Is this a 75% always, or is it, is it a 50% always? Yeah. And, and that's what I just mentioned myself. I mean, this, this story would have been way stronger if I did have the statistics, <laughs> if yeah. I did uh, take all the announcements, but then you also have to look at not just, just the successful ones. Uh, then you also have to look at the non-successful ones. So the companies that have high expectations, good team, nice projects, are drilling. What did those stocks do uh, before the disappointing news release came in? Uh, because it, otherwise you have a bias towards the, the positive one. So if you want to do a really good study, you have to do uh, both sides of the equation. My experience says that, and, and of course that's not, not enough to convince everyone, but that uh, typically good, good discoveries have a bit of a run. Uh, not always. Chalice is a really interesting uh, exception. Chalice made a discovery out of nowhere. Uh, a project that they didn't, they didn't even mention in the presentation yet. It was just mentioned in their uh, quarterly documents. And they drilled it because they had enough reason to not drill it. Like, let's give it a try. And they made a discovery that, that must have been visible. Uh, I mean, it was not the core. It was the type of discovery with nickel and uh, in it and, and some base metals that I think they must have seen that it was at least a level of significance because it was completely green fields and that stock even went down before the day they announced the big discovery um, so in Australia companies have to halt a little bit earlier typically sometimes day ahead of the news uh, days ahead and if the stock goes up they get a price query from the ASX and they have to explain why they think the stock goes up uh, even the, the Orem company got this query and they had to explain um uh, why they think it went up. And they said, well, this reason, a uh, company notes that many peaks gold went up by 100% following the news in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, we, they had the Tieto shareholders that were known with this team. They, they had a big win in Tieto and they may have used their cash to go back to the early stage uh, prospect again. So they had several reasons in their answer to the price query, why they think the stock went up other than something uh, illegal let's just put it like this yeah so you're saying that everything in code d'ivoire just goes up <laughs> no, I'm just like, the, yeah, yeah you can drill a, a hole everywhere in the country and you will hit, hit gold uh, i mean i think finding the next avali must be so easy uh, i'm gonna start also a company and drill a hole somewhere correct yeah and you have all that satellite data so we can do it but and, and jokes aside we've been taught this we've been talking about avali a lot so i, I owe mm -hmm. To me, a lot of shares. So I'm very biased on this thing, just to be. Yeah. Clear. This was a joke. Not everything in Cote d'Ivoire always goes up, unfortunately. But and the, and and the satellite data joke you make, uh, because people cannot know this, uh, I, I do buy satellite data to follow where drill rigs are positioned. So I'm uh, nerd <laughs> enough to even follow where drill rigs are, are located and try to get anything out of it, which is quite difficult. Mm. Uh, but if I know where a company is likely going to drill and the drill is suddenly at a spot where I 
didn't expect it at all, especially in a VMS case where there is a, uh, a Gaussian outcropping and there is a big uh, uh, VTEM signal and there's a big uh, gravity signal. It's not very likely that suddenly the drill is in a different spot. So I do monitor things every now and then that are maybe a little bit of a long shot, but um, that's uh, why I am a, a junior mining nerd, I think. Yeah, rumor has it that that once you looked at the filings of a company and you saw that there was um, a, a communication expense, and so you called up all the restaurants in the area to see if the people <laughs> going there with investors or with pretty women, and then you shorted the stock and made a bunch of money. I might have made this up, but we'll never know. The point, the question that I would have here is, when do you start actually getting that, like buying satellite data? That's not for everybody, right? I mean, that's not. When, is it? Is it a, a position in your, like, when a position is too big in your portfolio? Is it a certain point when in, in your portfolio? Like when you say, oh, if your portfolio is that big and it's only mining, you should be doing that. Like you should be buying satellite data. You should be calling up the cafes and figure out what's going on. No, I mean you try things, and uh, I, I decided when I started buying satellite data that it was, in the no circumstance, gonna be a buying or selling. Uh, trigger. Uh, so I knew it was sort of wasting money, but it, there's there's several ways to find things out, and you never really know for sure what leads to a, you know, to an informed investor. And I've tried so many stupid things in the past, and some of them work, and and you keep on doing them. And I was interested enough. It was not super expensive, and I saw a guy in Australia do it when Greatland made the discovery there, and he was tracking uh, those drill rigs with satellites. And it took me some time to understand how to acquire satellite data and what type of satellite data. So I learned something from it. Uh, but, and, and I was, I'm following a company in Ethiopia. So it's, there's not everywhere. There are a lot of trees. So you can follow where a rig is positioned and, and you can follow it every day and you get a bit of a sense what they are doing without asking them every day, like, Hey, where are you drilling? I mean, that would be very annoying. Um, but I decided beforehand, like, I'm not going to make a buy or sell decision on this. Uh, it's just something to test and some just something to learn. And my conclusion is, is that it's interesting and you start speculating why they are doing certain things, uh, but you still don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's not a very useful uh, exercise so far. Good. Yeah. Well, it, it's, again, this, this is just something that I started learning once I, I got to know you better is that there's other ways to do things uh, besides the traditional way and and uh, anyways it's been interesting there's one point that might actually flow nicely into into the next part of the discussion here which is these things uh, again we talk about that the stock goes up before discovery but maybe not always and so you would have to run the data for us to know exactly how much that is but in the times that it doesn't go up or or well it does go up, but then a, a hole comes out and it's not good enough. And then the stock goes back down again. People typically get emotional. Well, that's actually a fair statement overall. I mean, people get emotional whether the stock goes up or not. When there's a strong movement in the stock to either direction, people would typically get emotional. And this reminds me of one of, of, of a comment that someone put under last week's video. And I'm gonna I'm gonna quote it here. All of these mining, we were talking about mining billionaires basically, basically last week, and we talked about Robert Wark and how he made his money and, and all these Richard. things. Richard. Uh, what did I say, Robert? It's Richard Wark. Yeah. Work. And so the, there's a person, it's B4, B, B for B. He says, all these mining billionaires have many things in common, but three major things in common, he says. First one is they are risk takers. Second is they got lucky. Third and most critical is they are salesmen. They can spin a good story and use other people's money to get rich. Bake it until you make it comes to mind, but we will go with good salesmen instead. Value, negotiation, price, charisma, buy low, sell high, all other ways of saying good salesmen is what he says. Quote continues, if you want to go one step further, the ones who have done similar to what these billionaires have done but not got but didn't get lucky – are being criticized as being destroyers of capital and the reason why most investors won't go near mining companies. It's a very narrow margin of difference, he says, end quote. Um, yeah, I said this is an excellent point, in my opinion. Um, results define everything in this space and many other space for that matter, or at least people's emotions. 
and I sent that quote to you and you said you had a couple of thoughts to it. But yeah, I mean, this, this, I think falls nicely within, within our conversation here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and typically the topics we discuss, I think about them ahead of time. And this one we discussed, let's say, be just before we started. Uh, but I think it's a really interesting comment. And I think I agree to most of it. Uh, it, it is very well said that as far as I can assess uh, how how billionaires become billionaires, because if it was very easy to assess that, then I would do it myself tomorrow. But um, I think in, in this industry, for sure, they are risk takers and they got lucky. And I think Ross Beatty has been very honest about his luck. And I think he does so many things right. And he's probably a little bit too, um, you know, he's probably... It's more. It's way more than just luck. But he always emphasizes that there's a lot of luck involved, and they are salesmen. And I think you hear that from people in Vancouver as well, um, who receive um, CEOs over to do a pitch for their next deal, and 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 they say as well, like some people come in and you feel that there's charisma. Somebody somebody really walks into the room, and I think Robert Friedland is a person like that who already from a young age uh, impressed people. And I think in any social um, atmosphere, you have leaders or people who follow others in, in groups of friends. There's always somebody who walks walks in front and talks much to, uh, most of the group. And I think some people have a natural, a natural um, charisma and people want to follow those people. And in this business, it's not different. It's maybe even more important. Um, and even if they don't have a good story, they spin it into a story. Uh, well, and he says for other people, using other people to get rich, which is a negative way of looking at it. In this business, you have to take risks. And everybody who puts money into a company is taking risks. So I'm not completely agreeing with how he phrases that. I think people have to decide themselves what, you know, if you buy something, you are responsible, nobody else. But yes, these people typically can spin a story can get a market valuation that is higher than the, than it's supposed to be or in comparison to others. Um, fake it until you make it is maybe also a little bit too strong, uh, but his point is correct. These people are good salesmen and know how to impress people. And even if the project is not good enough, they will spin, they will step over to another one. They will find something new, uh, which is something that David Lothan recently emphasized in his um, PDAC presentation as well. And um, and I think this this comment is to the point. And what I like about it as well is that he also looks at it from the other side, other people who try to, to do the same thing and are not as lucky or maybe not as uh, charismatic are uh, seen as uh, capital destroyers, which they may be, uh, in fact. Uh, and, and that's why people hate the industry. And I think the hate and the love are very close to each other in this industry. I think people are either very happy or very angry. You know, there's always two two different things. There's no gray area. Mm. I disagree with it, but for for the purpose of promotion, of course, it's easier to just say, this is good team, this is bad team, because it makes it very easy to to classify them. Uh, but I like the uh, the comments, uh, this listener or watcher made. Yeah, I like, I like, I like those kind of comments. I actually received uh, a, a good, good amount of... Um mail as well based on these last what have we done three or four episodes now since we're doing it uh there's someone actually with a very interesting story so again if there's people listening my email address is antonio at resource talks.com i answer everything all the comments and everything so there's someone who sent me a very cool story he might or might not come on the show and talk to me about it in the future or to, to us um so that'd be interesting but if yeah again um good comment i liked it um, I know we don't have too much time left, and there's one more thing maybe to discuss here, which is diamonds. You Last year when we were doing these, or in a different format, you told me that diamonds is kind of an industry that might eventually do something because it's been it's been in a thought for too long, basically. And, and so this week I saw a, a post from Lucara Diamond um, announcing announcing some results from the start of 2024. And so they sold 12% more diamonds from its mine in Botswana than the first quarter of 2023. And their operating costs are dropping. So there seems like there's more demand. They're doing well. Is this something that you would look at and be like, oh, this is a starting shot. This is the bull market for diamonds. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I stay away from, I, I try to do the things that I understand and the diamond industry in general, I listen to people when they tell me their opinion about the market and with diamonds, of course, you have competition between the real diamonds and nowadays the artificial ones they can make. Um, and, and I guess there will always be a market for diamonds, but it may be smaller than in the past. I, I don't know. In, I, there's a couple of years ago that I looked into the diamond markets. I never really felt an edge. So I think there's two reasons to invest either in this mining industry, in this industry anyways. Um, it's either you really believe in the metal. I almost never do that. I never buy a gold stock because I believe in gold or silver stock or a uranium stock. I'm never really part of those movements, unfortunately, because lithium and uranium would have been nice. Um, I don't do these things very often. And the other thing is the company. Uh, do you have an edge in the company? Do you understand the project better than others? Do you understand the team better than others? Is there something you know you understand way better than than almost anyone to buy that stock and wait for whatever time frame you have in mind? Um, and that's why I this 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 topic is interesting, uh, but I'm not gonna review the diamond industry in general. Um, I I think. When you have a qualified opinion about the diamond industry and you think something in the 90s can happen again and, and you have good reasons to believe that, then that could be uh, a reason to buy diamond companies. I don't know enough about it, so I wouldn't do it. I own one diamond company, a very, very small company, and I own it because I think that the team will come up with something. They have a shareholder, which I think at some point will, wants his money back. <laughs> and, and if this diamond property is not going to work, something else will. Um, so there's a bit of, of, of protection there for me. And uh, so I think I have an edge in that company because nobody follows it. I know it better than the, the 10 persons who also follow it. And that's why I own it. But I wouldn't buy Lucara not because I don't like Lucara, because I don't, I cannot assess their mining project, and I cannot assess their, uh, the 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 industry they operate in. Or I cannot, I don't know enough about it, or I would have to do a lot of work that I'm not willing to do on diamonds. So, uh, but my point a year or two ago was indeed, um, it is interesting to, I'm I'm interested if diamond will the diamonds ever get. A 1990s time again and perhaps maybe this is an invitation to someone who feels qualified to talk about it and join us on this show because i have many questions but uh i don't have the knowledge to um, to speak more than i already did about this topic one other question actually would be can anyone because you say you don't have the knowledge to maybe analyze uh lucara's mine or you cannot do but get but Look, can anyone like our diamond mines even analyzable? As in, as far as I know, they're very oftentimes unpredictable. Hmm. Does they're quite similar to nuggety gold systems? Again, not a geologist, but I mean, can you analyze a, a gold a diamond mine? Well, in the end, I think you can learn everything. You need to be enough committed enough. I I also stay away from oil, even though I come from the oil industry, uh, um, because I feel like I can only rely on other people's opinion, and I wanna I wanna really form my own opinion. Uh, so I think if if you ask for a meeting with Lucara and you you take an hour or two hours of meeting and and you you enjoy that meeting and you and you're interested, and there's a natural uh, interest to investigate that company and after investigating the company you in investigate the industry and, and the diamond the diamond history itself i think if you really enjoy something then you can become good at it and that's why i mean who would have known that you looked into iocgs uh, three or four years ago uh, if you if there's a good reason to be interested and you enjoy the process of reading about it um, you can learn in the process, like I learned about satellites, <laughs> and you can um, actually use it if if it's if you learn enough about it. So I think it's you're never too old to learn, but just to do it to make money is not enough. You you have to have a natural interest in a certain topic, I think. Um, and then I've been reading about VMS systems the last two years, like a lot. And VMS is not even the biggest, uh, typically not the biggest mines in the world. But um, I became interested. Uh, there was another reason because of investments I have. And and I enjoy the reading. I enjoy the listening. But that doesn't make me a VMS expert yet. Um, so yeah, I think it's possible to um, to answer your question to, uh, to perhaps know enough because diamonds are not popular and you could be one of the few people following it uh, 
And when you feel like you are, you found out something out that most people uh, didn't because diamonds are so unpopular, uh, maybe it is an opportunity. But again, I would love to have someone in the show. Uh, maybe we should try to do that uh, and talk about diamonds a bit more. Well, they're not in Côte d'Ivoire, so the stock's not going up. Well, I don't know that. I don't know if there's no... Uh, maybe it's a very stupid thing to, thing to say, but I thought that in... Uh, I do remember that a West African country did have diamonds, but maybe I'm saying something stupid right now, so uh, I have to be careful. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's it could be interesting. Maybe we will be that, that, that podcast that will uh, talk about diamonds just a month before everybody wants diamonds again. <laughs> uh, but uh, not very likely. Yeah, I hope you're right. And uh, again, Antonio at ResearchTalks.com for people listening and also GoldDiscovery.com for people who want to see the alerts and everything else. There's also an app that you can download, the Gold Discovery app. But uh, Luke, that's the pot. Thank you. For, thank you so much. Thank you. See you next week.